Hey, what's up guys, it's Carl. And if you're one of the dudes who just loves carrying a big, dumb, heavy gun that functionally performs about the same as the MP5 with the drum magazine that that 12 year old over in the corner just killed you with, then boy, have I got the video for you. Uh, now in all seriousness, today we're going to be talking about the Airsoft Support Weapon or Machine Gun. Um, it's a role that I find really interesting and I believe that it's set apart from most other uh, AEGs and rifles just because uh, it's a role that really requires the cooperation of the game rules in order for it to really shine. Otherwise, there's not a whole lot of point in, you know, humping these big heavy guns around. So let's take a look at them. Now, all of that being said, uh, the role of Airsoft Machine Gunner is just another one of those areas where I have some thoughts to share with you about it. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I see happening on the field that uh, I think, if corrected, will make you a really effective uh, squad machine gunner if that is your preference and I wanted to talk about it uh, much like Al Bundy reliving his glorious high school football days And I'm not even sure if you guys are old enough to get a married with children reference What is my life point number one? And I know you guys probably don't want to hear this But your primary role as a machine gunner isn't going to be killing the enemy players um, and I know that that sounds maybe counterintuitive, uh, given the nature of Airsoft, but an effective machine gunner knows that your job is to lay down heavy suppressing fire and make those heads duck. Now, generally speaking, in my opinion, the vast majority of the time, uh, real-world military tactics are going to be very hit or miss on whether or not they actually apply to the game of Airsoft. But that being said, uh, I've been on a bit of a Hardcore History World War I podcast binge of late, and there are lots of anecdotes about machine gunners and their roles in the squads, and I think that it actually does apply to the specific instance of Airsoft. More specifically, there are a lot of stories about squads unexpectedly encountering one another, and generally, the squad that got their machine gun up and running first was going to walk away from that fight to victor, and in my opinion, that's essentially the case with Airsoft as well. In the first few seconds of a BB fight, hitting the enemy with an absolutely overwhelming stream of plastic is going to keep them from getting squirrely or aggressive with you, and in my opinion, 9 times out of 10 is probably going to determine the outcome of that fight. And again, we're talking specifically about milsim games here, where normal riflemen are probably limited in the amount of ammo that they can carry, or are limited to probably just mid-cap magazines. So the existence of guns that are conceivably carrying a box mag with a couple thousand rounds of expendable ammo is going to matter immensely. And keep in mind, this fire doesn't have to be accurate per se. I mean, obviously, if you encounter the enemy in the open and you have the opportunity to engage them, then by all means. But your primary goal is going to be forcing that enemy into cover, keeping them there, and allowing your riflemen to move and flank them while you keep them pinned in that one spot. Now this brings me to my second point, which is the actual mechanics of your LMG or MMG and its implementation on the field. I'm sure all of us have seen the guy that shows up with an M249, is real stoked about it, and then maybe he has to bail halfway through the game because guess what, it broke. Needless to say that proper gearbox preparation, maintenance, and making sure that your gun is running effectively before you step off the field is crucial, absolutely crucial. Much more so than an AEG, generally just because of the amount of stress that you are putting on these mech boxes. Proper gear Gearbox maintenance and preparation before the game itself is absolutely crucial to doing your job as a machine gunner and making sure that you can stay in the fight. There's really no point in being a machine gunner if you have to bail out three hours in. Now this is especially true with some of these larger support weapons that in real life would be firing a large caliber round, something like a 308 or with the PKs like a 762 by 54 A lot of organizers are opening up the rules and FPS limits to make it so these things can hit at 500 plus FPS. Now, if you think about what a machine gun actually entails, obviously you wanna have a really high rate of fire as well. So high rate of fire plus high FPS means that you are putting a lot of stress on these internal components. When tuned properly, these guns can be downright scary to square off against. But the flip side of that is that if you're running a 500 FPS build with a high rate of fire as well, you can and maybe should expect that your mech box may go down at some point during the event. That's why proper maintenance and preparation before the event is absolutely crucial, as well as having maybe a set of tools in an easily accessible location so that in the event that your gun does go down, you can work on it, or better yet, even bring a spare mech box that you can readily swap into it if that does happen. This is actually one of my friend's PKPs that was run at the Rostov event that I covered a little while ago, and all of our PKP gunners had spare mech boxes back at our camp. 
camp. And I believe a few of them actually did go down, but it didn't take them out of the fight because we had those spare mech boxes around. Super handy. At the end of the day, these are still machines, and you're probably going to be running them into the red if you're doing your job properly as a machine gunner for most of the event. However, proper preparation is going to keep you prepared for that eventuality and keep your gun in fighting shape. And on that note, here is a clumsy but necessary segue into point number three, which is fighting shape. These guns are honestly not super fun to carry around until it gets to the point where you're cranking off thousands of rounds, right? Uh, they're heavy, they're cumbersome, and at events where there's maybe a lot of patrolling and a lot of rucking, they suck. They suck to carry. Uh, but what is going to mitigate that is, <gasps> gasp, physical fitness. Now, disclaimer, this is by no means meant to discourage anyone or put anyone down whatsoever. But what I'm getting at here is if you're maybe thinking about going out to a vent and you can't shoulder a machine gun or hump it around the field for long periods of time, you kind of start to go from squad asset to squad liability. Best case scenario, maybe you're holding up the squad a little bit and you're lagging on getting into those positions that is going to allow you to lay down that dominant suppressive fire. But worst case scenario, maybe you injure yourself or fall out and have to be pulled out of the event, which is going to cause pauses in the game and ultimately be a situation that no one wants to deal with. At the end of the day, it is airsoft and it's supposed to be fun. And I get that. Everyone's gonna be moving at their own pace and rhythm and generally that's fine. Uh, however, I am consistently sort of surprised by the amount of airsoft players who refer to this hobby as a sport, but maybe don't put the time or effort into physical conditioning like you would with other sports. So it's just a point that I wanted to bring up because I feel like we don't talk about that a lot as a community. Now, you don't need to be huge like Arnold and Predator, and you don't need to be some PT super stud, that's not what I'm getting at, but you should be able to wield, shoulder, and hump your weapon effectively for long periods of time. Honestly, even just taking up something consistently like jogging, like run for 20 minutes every night, and I guarantee you that that will make you both a better machine gunner and a more competitive airsoft player overall. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me today, but as always, I want your opinions. Uh, are you a machine gunner? Do you maybe have any tips that you think that I missed? What do you think about the somewhat controversial topic of airsoft fitness? Let me know in the comments section below, but please, please, please keep it chill. I'm Carl, this is GITV, I'll see ya.